Welcome to Meeples on Meeples, episode 45. I'm Adam. Andrew. Brian. Ian. As usual, before we get into our game this week, we'd like to invite you over to our website, meeplesonmeeples.com, as well as our Facebook page, facebook.com slash meeplesonmeeples. Um, go over, check out the website, check out our component shots that we have for all of our games. Uh, we also put up all of our videos over there, and every once in a while on our Facebook page, you'll get a, a random question posted that you can some interaction with the community with us. Um, and, of course, we like to invite you over to YouTube where you can subscribe to our channel over there and catch all of our videos as they go up. This week's game of the week is Star Wars X-Wing Miniatures game. Um, basically, it's a lot like Wings of uh, War, which has become Wings of Glory, if you've ever played that old airplane game, where you have these little individual models and it's simulating space combat in the Star Wars universe. Uh, one person will be playing the Rebels, there will be the Empire. Uh, there are a lot of different ships. The core game comes with one X-Wing and two TIE Fighters, but they've already released advanced TIE Fighters, TIE Bombers, there's A-Wings, Y-Wings, there's a big Millennium Falcon. And so you can... You, you can keep... <laughs> he's making that up. You can keep expanding your army depending on how much money you really want to sink into the game. Um, but basically what it is, is simulating space combat. You're trying to eliminate all the ships on the opposing side, basically. And there's also some other scenarios you can play, but that's the basic gist of it. Uh, there are some optional rules, so we're not going to explain every single thing in the rule book because um, that would take a while. I think we'd all agree. Um, you can optionally throw out some asteroids onto the field, uh, which could cause collisions and possible damage to your ship when you fly through them or past them, etc. Uh, there's secondary weapons, whatever. But the basic gist of the game is you have a ship and uh, you choose a pilot, a card, which will def um, kind of give you different abilities and special abilities. A better maneuverability, better attack. Better stuff. attack, better defense. You bet. Different pilots have different things that they're good at. Um, and then you have what they, I guess you call the, the dial, your movement dial that matches what type of ship. So here's the X-Wing dial, and here's the TIE Fighter dial. Okay, so my X-Wing can do um, several different movements, but they all correlate to one of these templates right here. For instance, if I do a three soft bank to the left, I find the three soft curve to the left, and it just matches the symbol on there. And so on my turn, I would put this down. It can be universal, right or left. And, and maybe it would help if we can kind of go through. There's uh, four different phases of the game, kind of explain how those work. That would be, I think, the easiest way. Yep. So initiative is decided by how many points you're worth and everything, and, and that's all explained in the rule book. So you secretly choose a move uh, because you don't want your opponent to know where you're going. And then you put your dial to show that you're ready face down next to that ship. The reason you put it face down next to that ship is because you can field multiple um, X-Wings with different pilots, and you have multiple TIE Fighters depending on how many copies of the game and miniatures yeah, you buy. You, that's how you expand it from a two-player game to a three, four, however many players. Exactly. So then when initiative comes around and it's his turn, I would reveal to everybody, okay, I did three, bank to the left. And that so would be I the, take the, the activation template. phase. Yep, activation phase. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry about that. So I show this, and then I take the template, and I fit it between the two notches. And so I start there. And this basically measures out where I go. Um, not all ships can do with all of the same movements because they technically have different speeds, different maneuverability and everything. So not every ship can necessarily do all of these maneuvers you see here. Then, the, then after you've done that, you, you clear that out of the way, and you can declare a special action. For instance, you can declare... Uh, Oh, what's this one called? Help evade. me out. Evade. If you fi find out you're in line of sight, somebody might be able to shoot at you. Evade will help you on your defense roll later. You can choose to do a lock-on if you have somebody in your sights um, so that you're, you'll be able to get re-roll dice and be more likely to hit them. Focus, which... Go ahead. Oh, I don't want to. Okay. <laughs> Focus, <laughs> uh, which is the little green eye here, which lets you change any of the eye rolls, the eye symbols on the dice. Which on will... defense or attack. Yep to uh, an automatic, you know, evade or hit, depending. And, and your actions are determined by your player card. Not all players can do all the actions. So That's true. That's... Different pilots. For instance, the TIE Fighters have really great uh, maneuver building. They can do cool barrel rolls, which really let them jump off to the side and get out of somebody's line of sight or get somebody in front of them to shoot. Um, so only, you can pick one you action play. unless you have a card that says you can do more than one action. Right, but the, the only thing is the next removal with the TIE Fighter with the barrel roll has to be done at that, de that, that declaration time. Yeah, you right cannot do it, you do it right any away. other additional time. And it's part of that type of... So let's say I had the TIE Fighter there after I did my move, and I know he's going to be in my line of sights because he had already moved before me or whatever. I might want to say, okay, you know, that's Luke Skywalker. He's, I'm going to lock on, in which I put this on there. The blue shows that I'm the one doing the locking. The red shows that's who I'm locking on to. So that when it comes time to attack, we remember that. Mm -hmm. Okay. And, and the way you tell if, whether you can hit them is you, you use the 
I don't know what they the measurement, the marker, the, the marker that last. as long as they're within, you know, they fit within this bar, you can hit them. And then depending on where they land in the bar, if they are in the three area, they get an extra defense die. If you're within one of them, you get an extra attack die on them. And, and I guess you... that's figuring because they'd have more time to react if they're further away or less yep. time to react if you get closer. But that's how, that's how you determine if you can hit them. Um, and then do you want to explain the once we get to the attack phase? Yeah. Then once everybody's done that... You, you, you place this out on your guy. You make sure they're within range. Everybody has a little kind of V on the front of them that lets you know where they can see the enemy. And you lay it out. You find out how far away you are, who gets the extra die, uh, whether it's extra defense die in the three, extra attack die in the one. Or and then, nobody in the two. Or nobody yeah. in the two. And then you just roll. The uh, attacker rolls the red die for every one of the, the hits or critical hits that you get. The stars. Um, that's, that's obviously going to do damage. But the other player that's defending gets to roll a certain number of green die, depending on their character. And for every evade symbol they get, which is kind of the curvy arrow with a dot, that cancels out one of the hits. And... You you spend all of your focus points, any special abilities you can, and then once you're done with that, you just compare the hits to the evades. If there's more hits than evades, the the defender takes damage. If they have shields, the shields get taken down first, and then after the shields get taken down, they get dealt a damage card. Now, a, a normal damage, if it's just a regular hit, is just a regular damage card. It looks like a big explosion. You lay it on their card, and that takes away one of their hit points. If you do a critical hit, you actually give them one of the damage cards face up, and every damage card has a, a special, I guess, attack on the back of it. So I had one that knocked out my your engine, uh, right? engines. Yeah, so I couldn't. Um, I, I I was less likely to evade. I yeah, the screen die. Some will uh, do two damage. Some will make it so um, you can't use any of your actions. That type of stuff. So that's if you do a critical hit, you do a little more damage to their ship, so they're not able to do as much as the game goes on. And then once you have uh, as many damage cards on your player as they had health, they're out of the game. Pretty simple. And you just pick each other up. I mean, it sounds really complicated, but basically it's just measuring, moving, then waiting, and then there's an, you know, after everybody's done that, there's an attack phase, and you get into the swing of it pretty quickly. Uh, why don't we jump right into our components? Hmm. You know what to say about that? Um, if we were rating this just on components, I'd say it's like a solid nine. The, the paint job is amazing on the miniatures. Um, Brian hand painted that. All of the, <laughs> not true. All of the cardboard is really thick and sturdy, and I really like the dials. I think they hold. I think pretty the well. dials are actually super cool. Yeah, they're they're nice and tight. It's not like the ones that all you know, they can spin around really easy and lose track of where you're at. It's, yeah, that's true. You can't accidentally knock it and bump it off. It it's pretty. It's tight enough. Yeah. The only, I guess the only downfall is it's a really flimsy piece and really flimsy bases. Yeah, it, for instance, if you throw like an empty water bottle at one yes, of them, they I'm might not, break. Not exactly. <laughs> I don't know who did that. That's, that's just a rumor, but it might snap the spaceship off of the base and then you have to super I like it. that they have two different levels for 3D space, so if two people are occupying the same space... Yep. They have. You, could, you, can you take could technically take out one of the little things if you wanted to, because if, if they overlap, yep, it might make it easier to fit them together. But the bases don't. There's no way to do that with the base. Yeah, so. it's, if they're on top of each other, they're on top of each other. Yeah. But if they're close, you can you can do the two different levels. I like the too. fact that even though they only give you three ships in the the starter box, the core game, you actually have multiple options for building your army because you could be. There's a Luke Skywalker car, and it actually goes around the base. We don't have that out at the moment. There's like a, I think a Biggs Darklighter. Yeah. There's just a re regular Rebel rookie pilot. Um, so even though you're gonna have a bunch of eventually. X-Wings, X -wings, yep. you have a, multiple uh, pilots you can play with all different abilities, yeah. and they all can maneuver and fly differently and get bonuses. Um, with this, yeah, with your starter too. pack, though, you do have a, the only three defense and three attack dice, and then but there are always points where you actually get four or whatever yeah. dice, and it seems to be that the starter pack just isn't enough to start, and that would be and their complete down. That has been called out. They actually sell the dice separately. Basically, they're trying to get you to buy another set of dice. They I sell guess, it separately. I know. I guess. I guess you could do the cheap man way. You just reroll another dice and say, "I just remember that one not being a hit." Or yeah, it, the dice are nice too. You get a green set and a red set. Is that yep. what it comes with? And it's and engraved and painted, painted on the red. inside. So it's not stickers, things like that. That's right. That the paint's not going to wear off or anything. No, very, um, very well thought of. Uh, a little tip, and it kind of fits in with the components. Um, instead of buying a second set of dice, um, buying extra X wings, buying extra tie fighters because they do sell them separately, it's cheaper to buy a second core game, which is what I did. 
Um, cause the ships are 15 bucks a piece, but you can buy the whole game for 40 full price. You're going to find it for a lot less than that. And you're going to get two sets of templates, two sets of dice, more asteroids, more ships and everything mm-hmm. cheaper that way. Yeah. Um, anything else on components for you guys? I mean, they're, I think they're, they're just gorgeous. I mean, the, the, the it's a the fantasy flight really game good. and that's what they're known for. They did really well on it. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. Amazing paint and amazing minis. How about strategy on this one? I mean, Ian and I talked about this a little before I, the way I view strategy is it's almost like a game of chess. You almost have to think your thoughts out, your, your, your moves out well in advance, kind of plan out maybe two or three moves out what you're going to do and have an idea of how you're going to do it. Because especially when we have like eight ships on the, on the table, you have to take into account where everybody's at, what move they might make, how that's going to affect what you're going to do later on. And so it's, it's really a game where you got to kind of plan out far in advance I and how your character can move versus their the other character. character exactly like, yeah can, the, can they turn away from you really quick when you can't turn the barrel it? roll like, mm-hmm. got got me a couple times when i thought for sure i would have a, a tie fighter yeah, in my sights just like chess ian's world renowned chess player too he's playing this a few times <laughs> not, not even not even close um the interesting with the with your guys's characters or the opposite characters you actually don't get to see their dial so it really, as far as I know, that I understand that that ship is a bit more maneuverable than the other ship is. But other than that, I don't really know what moves you have available to yourself, unless I played that character and understood it directly. But yeah. don't you think that adds to the realism factor that yeah, I don't everybody's know. flying around trying to get somebody lock on targets, get some in the sights, and it's just a little bit chaotic, and you just have to kind of act on the spur of the moment where you think you want to be? Well, the only thing yeah. that I don't like is that if you run into each other, you don't lose points. And, and that's somewhat sorcery realistic because it's, it's 3D space. So the idea is you're probably flying under oh. them or flying over them. But in, However, the, in the original in the Wings of Glory game, you would take damage. You would actually yeah. fly they with each other, it. which is maybe a little less realistic. However, if you choose to play with the asteroids and the optional rule, if you fly through them or land on them, you roll an attack, an attack die to see if the asteroid hits you. And if it comes up a star, which I just did, you, you clipped it when you flew by. So you can take damage. You can actually add, I guess, terrain to interfere with the battle. I, I get it, Which is even everything strategy. else for strategy, really? Though? I mean, it's... Can, I, can I throw out Star Fox? Is that an option? Why are you throwing out Star Fox? I don't know. Star Fox. No, N- I want to see where he goes N- with N- this. N- 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 four <laughs> Star Fox, so you have the ability to play against your friends up to four in a three dimensional space, and really, you're you're in a dogfight with each other, and you're trying to. You have the ability to barrel roll. You have the bar- ability to flip around and do a, a complete one eighty on the person and head back the other way. You have your you have your sights. You have your areas. It's a very similar setup. It's a dogfight, really. Yeah, I mean, any, I guess any dogfight game. Like I mean, the old but that, but that one, TIE Fighter games are kind of the same idea. Yeah, I mean, but that was one that just really kind of stuck out in my mind as far as, like, they just had very similar... Reminds movements. me a lot of uh, Microsoft's Flight Simulator. <laughs> <laughs> just because really fine. any airplane game. Because Star Fox is totally coming. relevant in this game. Um, um, another strategy is know your special abilities, and yeah, you have to yeah, plan carefully. Yeah. Because, like, the example I gave, we did, like, a lock-on. But let's say you do the focus. You have to decide... Let's say he's got me in my sights, I've got him, so I'm going to be attacking him, but at some point he's going to be attacking me. Uh, do I want to use up my focus ability on the attack? On my attack to damage him, or would it be better to save it, pull it back for the defense in case he hits me? And I might waste it, he might not hit me at all, and I saved it for nothing. And, and so you have to really kind of plan when you call your ability early on. Uh, when am I going to need it? And, and, and this is gonna are sound, they going to be in my line of sight? This is going to sound dumb. Just don't forget to use those actions yes. and those abilities. The actions you always have the ability to do, except when your your ship is stressed from doing a hard maneuver. But you also have uh, abilities on your card that are always available to you that you just have to remember to use. Sometimes it's you automatically get to re-roll a die. Sometimes it's you automatically get to flip one of the die over and make it a, a block on the I'll fence. give an example of Luke Skywalker. Whenever I rolled uh, uh, the focus symbol. I guess the, the focus symbol on the green die, the eyeball, I could automatically change one into a, an evade. And I forgot that a couple of times. You know, I mean, it's an easy avoid getting hit, but you don't think about it because the card's down here and all the action's out there. Yeah, it's just one of those, it, it sounds maybe dumb, but just keep that in mind. Remember, know your, know your abilities and don't forget to use those actions. Mm-hmm. I mean, uh, how about likes and dislikes then? Um, only dislike is that they're flimsy stands. You gotta be careful with the ships. Yeah. True. Um, space. You can, you can, up, you know, they, they recommend 3x3, three three, but there really is no set boundaries for different games and it really the further out you go the longer the game let's, takes. let's be honest it's space is it really 
confines. We're talking more ships. The bigger play area you need, you just have to kind of decide what you're doing. Yeah, and we have really, what we nine, have nine, nine ships yeah. total. Yeah. In really, in all actuality, we probably used what a five by three. Yeah, I mean, we, we probably could have gone. We actually we used. did nine ships on this table, and we probably could have gone a little bit smaller to maybe make it a little more intimate, a little more action. Well, I think, I think Ian and I had all the action down here. I don't know what you guys are doing over we here. We had There's two ships on this half of the table, <laughs> and like seven. Right, when <laughs> yeah. you have Darth Vader chasing you around, you run. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. He did you know, all the room. I you like don't play and shake hands and you well, get out of true. there. Actually, that's the idea. Probably should have been to pull Darth Vader into the actual fight and left like just some some wimpy guy out there and just yeah. kind of turn him down. Um, likes I obviously like the theme. We're we're I mean we play board games. You can assume we like Star Wars. So Star Wars that's is Star always Wars. awesome. You don't, don't, assume, <laughs> don't assume. Yeah. Okay. No, most the cool not ones. All of us like Star Wars. <laughs> um, I enjoy. Star but Wars. I also like the way this mimics the theme of a space battle. Um, you know, planning your moves, flying around fast. Yes, your pilot can be stressed if you do a, a difficult maneuver, like a quick flip around. Um, and I just feel like it all comes through in the gameplay really, really well. I, I, I like that for a, a Even different measure. You got the, the Star Wars that can bring in a certain crowd, but I think you can really enjoy this game without actually liking Star Wars at all. I think the, the way it plays out, the kind of the strategy that goes into it, yeah, it has the Star Wars theme. You can really get into that if you want to, and it's going to bring in a certain, like I said, a certain crowd of people. But it's also, I think, just a good game without that. Like, we played the, the Wings of Glory game, and I like that. It's essentially the same rules, same ideas. Um, it's just a little bit better for me because it is Star Wars, and I do like it. Um, I do have to admit, though, coming into this, I, I just did not want to play this game. It seemed You bit, requested it, like, I, three or four times. I know, because everybody said it was such a great game. It just seemed, it just seemed like it was going to be god-awful. Um, but the, I mean, just the fact that you have to measure things out and you have to, it, you know, it's very, um, it, I thought it was going to be more yeah, objective yeah, instead of... Um, for me, that's a light show that it's pre-measured for you. Where some games you can take out a tape measure and decide, this is like, no, I chose to bank to the right. left at speed of three, I'm, boom. I thought it was more going to be objective as far as, like, I I think I have you in my sights and my line, and I just did not want that I like type that of gameplay. Too, though, I like that, too, These are predetermined. So yeah. if I do it, and then he does it next time... It's not, you move this far, and then I moved all the way this far. It is exactly, yeah, and there's little notches on your piece, hook onto this, and then it you work the back of the right? notches to it. There's no guessing game about it. It's, no, this it's, is where you move. I'm sorry, just, but go ahead and finish it, what you're saying. It just yeah. felt more intimidating in that it was going to be this big, complex game, but then the breakdown and the flow of the game tends to really set you up to, you're only doing a couple things per um what uh, what's phase? Yeah. Yes, yeah, and and that really helped the, with the, the way they broke it up the and complexity of yeah. what it actually is. The pacing, exactly. It's and really I think nice. I think it really did well for itself. And to, to give you an idea, the pacing, I really like the fact that um, the order is easy to remember because the the lowest number ship, as far as ranking, whatever, moves first, and you go up, you count up to the highest ship, and when it's time to attack. The highest ships, since they move last to kind of even it's, things it's out, they based attack on, first, and then you count back down. It's based on pilot skill. So the yep. person with the highest pilot skill is the last to move, but the first to attack. Yeah, and, and so you just go up and just go back in reverse order, and I think that helps you remember. Does yep. that just make them more aggressive? Yeah, I guess. Yeah, something you have to like even that. out, though, because if they move first and attack first, that'd be a little unfair. So I think I kind of like how they chose to do it. Uh, Unless you're going first. Unless well, yeah. uh-huh. <laughs> Unless you die, and then you're like, well, that stinks, I didn't get to attack. <laughs> Uh, why don't we just jump into our reviews then? Uh, we do the scale of one to ten. Ten being terrible. No. Nope. Ten being great. One being terrible. <laughs> uh, Andrew, start with Adam. Well, let's just say that I don't like Star Wars. I'm the one. Uh, but I would give this game a. Now wait. How do you know you don't like it? Because you've never seen Star Wars. That's Shame on you. That's the bigger tragedy. Shame yeah, on you. I, I've seen a lot of. I've seen the commercial. clips. I've seen a lot of talk. I've seen all the blah blah blah. It just doesn't interest me. Um, and I haven't seen the original. R2 Baka and BYOB Kenobi. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen the spoofs. Bring them. They were terrible too. Uh, on that note, though, I'd give it a nine. I enjoyed playing it. I like the aspect that there's more rules that we could have added in. Um, the attacking was fun. The spatial things were great. This is fun because there's actually little arrows where you can just miss somebody. You can just miss them at the end of this. The little pieces that give you focus. It plays very smoothly. You don't have to check the rule book almost never. 
Yeah, that's and true. Surprisingly, yeah. Yeah, and well, the cards tell you with your special abilities exactly what you can do. Like there was one where I got to save somebody from being attacked, and they had to attack me instead because of the proximity they were in, the fact that it's almost a 3D atmosphere. It's just I thought it was an awesome game. I, I'm going to agree with Andrew. I'm going to give it a nine. Um, one of the main things being is we didn't have to look back at the rule book. It's it's a very simple. You, you get out the pieces and it's pretty self-explanatory. I mean, if you look at the dial, you see what the movement was. You find that piece out here and you do it. The attacking is the same way. I mean, it's pretty simple. You lay down this and you find out whether they're in range or not, and then you roll some dice. It it doesn't take a lot to really get into it. But the nice thing is, is there are advanced rules. If you want to make it more difficult, you can add in these optional rules and make it a, a more complex game. Our last game, did we play with pretty much almost all of the rules the last game? We were pretty close. Yeah, we didn't do the secondary weapons, and there's a couple. We didn't, we didn't, haven't actually played one of the mission levels. I think there's three missions. That's true, we just did straight up battle. Yeah. But, and that's, that's another like of the game, is there's actually really three ways to play it. There's like a five minute version, like open the box and you can play it without really knowing a lot. There's the standard kind of base game, and then there's the advanced game where you can add in these extra rules. So depending on your the ability of the players, you can either do the really, really simple game, you know, for maybe a new player or a younger player, or if it's a really experienced group, you can go on a full-out mission and, you know, have rules, things you need to accomplish, that type of stuff. It's just a lot of fun, though. The components are gorgeous, obviously being a fantasy flight game. Uh, I really, really liked it, and the only thing that... Kind of the downside is when you buy the single box, you really don't have enough to play a full-fledged game. You I mean, are the to... best you can hope for is a two-player game yeah. that's going to go very quickly because there just aren't a lot of ships or options. You can maybe extend it with the advanced rules, but I think even some of the advanced rule games wouldn't play that well with two people. But it's still a great game. We'll give it a And number. with this selection of ships, yeah. yeah. Uh, um, you know, I'm, I'm actually surprised that I'm the low number here. I'm going to go on eight. Um, you own because, it expansions. Yeah, I don't, I've, I've sunk <laughs> oh, quite yeah, a bit of money into this game. I have two copies. I bought a couple Y wings. I don't know. I bought quite a bit so far. Um, and keep in mind that eight is a great score. Yeah. I mean, don't get me wrong. I'm just surprised I'm lower than you guys. The reason I give it an eight, since they've they've covered everything, I agree that I love the fact the first time I popped it open, my 12 years old son and I went through the. There's a simple rule book, it's like three pages long. That plays with very few of the rules, but just gives you a, a flavor of the game. And we were playing within 15 minutes after opening it. And we got it, and he's you know 12, and he's never really played a miniatures game, and it clicked. And then all the way up to it can be super complex. So I think you could play this with almost anybody, especially because of the theme. But since they've covered all that, I'll cover why I would knock it down a couple points. Setup is a, a bit much. When you get out all of these, there's just piles of cardboard chits all over the place. Um... But cleanup's even worse. Yeah. Reseparating all those things either into baggies or containers or however you've chosen to do it um, is a, a bit much. You have to be really careful taking the ships yeah, apart so you don't the break them off the bases. You have to take those ships, all the little pieces apart, because if you throw them in there with like that, they're going to break. <laughs> yeah, you got to package them. In. And, and the packaging is nice, but it's just that you have to get it back into that packaging every single time. So it's little things like that that, that would knock it down for me, I would say. Um, otherwise, though, it is an excellent game, a solid eight. The more expansions you get, the more you're going to get out of the game, though, and, and your score will go up. My go, huh? Yep. Uh, you guys said a lot. Uh, I'm just going to go with a, a 9, because I don't own the game, so I don't really care about your, your views. <laughs> so, I, do, I do see, though, how you would want to, like, you own the game. You have to set everything up. You would have it as a lower score. I don't own the game. I come in, I play it, it's fun. That's all I get. And then you break some crap and I, leave. I break it. <laughs> and, and that makes it more fun. Um, but I, I see how it, the own, I mean, owning this game would be, it's a nice to have and it, it would be a lot of fun to play over and over and over again. And you really, you're not going to get the same game experience anytime, really the same. No, no. Um, and everything's pretty evened out. Every, uh, everything rules, everything lines up very beautifully in this game and it, everything looks good doing it too. There's no clunkiness. It flows great. Um, I mean, it's just, there are some just nuances as far as. Is that is that worth thirty five bucks or whatever off it, online? I don't know. I don't think so. Something I want to throw in there that I liked about it. You know, we talked about not having a lot of disputes about the rules. There is actually a rule or a dispute tiebreaker in the book, even. So if you guys get in a fight and you can't decide who's going to win, it's something to do with rolling the the attack dice and whoever ends up with more hits, that person's view wins, and then you just move on. 
So they, they actually built that into the game, too. I really like that. I don't know where you'd ever get into that conflict. I don't either, but... <laughs> but I, mean, I don't like the fact that they just kind of... They don't have enough for you to really get into the game right out of the main box. And that's that's really a downfall, especially for the well, price that they're going But for. do you understand... <laughs> Do you they're, kind of understand that they, they want to get they, they want to hook you they want to suck money they out want you. a low like cost that. of entry even though I agree with you it's not the enough. cost of entry isn't even isn't even entering the game that's that's the point I agree they don't give you the you need more dice and stuff but I see why they did it I see more people can afford that and you can technically play and enjoy the game with that. But you're gonna so want you're more. You're saying technically, technically, you can <laughs> technically play that. I don't want to say I bought a thirty-five dollar game and say I can technically play this. I like to buy a thirty-five dollar game and say I can full on have an adventure. Well, I can technically fun. drive a Ferrari, or I can technically drive a Focus. It's the same. You thing. don't. Know you me can either. do it. Yeah. <laughs> you, you can. You, um, you, 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 <laughs> one for one of those. Why would you want to? But <laughs> the Ferrari. Yeah, Gross. exactly. Car. Gross. Yeah. All right, well, I, that's our review of uh, the X-Wing Miniatures game. Uh, check out our website and see what our new video is next week.